Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to build my writing dashboard with me. This is in Capacities. I have previously written in many other apps, but I've landed in Capacities for most of this year and I really regret that I didn't do it sooner. The reason for that is I don't share my notes online. I don't think I need to. What I share is things I learn about the process and other things along the way. So my posts are essentially artifacts of my journey through this note-taking digital systems type world. The process that I go through though obviously revolves around capacities because that's where all of my notes are. So it makes total sense, I now realise, to have my writing set up within capacities so that when inspiration strikes it is merely a moment away to create a new post, to write down some quick thoughts and then get back to where I was before, to the thing that had sparked that inspiration. As you can see here, the setup that I have uses lots of pinned queries so I can access certain parts of my writing much quicker. And it's just been really fun, not only for creating new posts, but also reviewing some old writing, which I brought into capacities and to sort of see it in a new context and see what new things I've learned and how it evolves. So I will show you how I set this up. It's a simple object type with a few queries and hopefully it can give you some inspiration if you're looking to create a writing setup in capacities. But to be honest, this is obviously hyper personalized and all you really need is a place to write. So you can start with pages and evolve from there. This is just my setup, which has equally evolved over many months now. So let's get started and I'll show you how to create this object type and all the queries that form the dashboard. So to start things off, I will click on new type and I want to create my object type where I do my writing. For me, it has to be a custom type because I like properties. So I will create that and of course it will be indigo. And this is now where my writings will live. It's a very simple type right now. I want to add some properties. So icon and cover image, of course. And I'm going to add a label property for the type of writing that I'm doing. For me, there are three. There's personal, there's stuff for what I publish online, which I just call Beth McClelland, very originally, and think pieces, which I might publish in like 10 years, but for now, it's neither personal nor publishable. And I then go and edit those. I have kind of my own like codes. So I just will add those. And then my label property is set up. Next, I want to add a status. And I use the same status across all my object types. So even though we have labels and you can use labels for status, for me, the unified status system that I have means tags work really nicely because when I click on in progress I see in progress writing but also anything else that's in progress as well. To be honest because of grouping and queries and stuff you can absolutely use labels for that but for me I like the mental model of labels just for things related to this one object type and tags for something that can unite different object types together. So to add this tag status property I want an object select linked to tag and I only want to choose one status so I want to change it to a single select and I want to choose it from a fixed set of tags. I have 400 tags, I don't want to see all of them when I click on them, I just want to see status ones. So by clicking single object and fixed set I am permitting that. Obviously I should rename it and then I will start filling out the set here. And then in the property settings, I can rearrange them just so they're in kind of logical order for me. And then that drop down list is ready for me to use forever. Next up is a date time property, and I'm going to call it published on. Now, I'm going to hide this property when it's empty because I write a lot more than I publish. So I don't always want to see that. And if I hover, I get to add it via a button, but otherwise it will not be filled in or shown, which is good for me. And 
what I've realised over time is that often when I'm writing things to be published, I realise that maybe there's a concept in draft A, which I feel like should be explained before I actually publish that. So then I create a new post and I start writing it, but I really need to publish that one before I publish the one I was originally writing. So some pieces of writing block others and therefore other pieces of writing are blocked by some content as well. So to put that kind of relationship into capacities, I'm going to use an object select property linked to the writing type. And I'm gonna call it blocking. And I want to create a two-way linked property. I'll show you what magic this creates in a moment. So I've just clicked on that create property button and it's created a new one for me. And I'll click apply. And it's important to rename this one to blocked by. Now I've opened a new writing object, let's call it post number two, and if I say that writing number one is blocking post number two, in that one click I also fill out this blocked by property in post two. So whether I open this first, I see that it's blocking something, or if I open this first, I see it's blocked by something, and I have that link to find out who the related post is just in that one click. So I find that very helpful, but just like with the date, I don't need to see it all the time. So I will hide it when empty. The final property that I add is a text property called title change. I'll hide that when empty as well. But um, it often takes me weeks or even months to publish something. And that's because the idea is kind of forming in my head and the more I take notes or the more I think, the idea evolves slightly. So I like to track the title change so I know kind of how the idea was sparked and then what it ended up being when I published it. It's just kind of fun for me to track that and that property helps me do that. And it's also helpful for search in case I'm still thinking about it with a previous title, it will show up very easily. So this is what my writing environment often looks like. I feel like it's really simple. And if I wanted to even hide everything else, I can use this focus mode, which just hides the kind of extra buttons around the UI and I can just write. But one of my favorite things about my writing setup in capacities is actually the object dashboard, which is what you see when you click on one of your object types in the sidebar. And because I have lots of different types of writing at different statuses, I like to create queries and pin them here so that I can quickly flip between them. So I'll show you how I set those up. So to begin, I'm going to create a query. And the first query I'm going to create is my personal writing. So I'll give it an emoji and I want to filter where the type of writing includes personal. And I want to pin that to the dashboard so that I get this section. Now, this is the format that I follow for all types of writing. So I'm just going to save a few clicks and duplicate that query. So this is for my published writing. So I change the label, pin and duplicate the query again. I have three sections where I can dive into my writing very easily, which I like. I also create a query, which is what I call a maintenance query. And what this does is it collects things that don't have the correct properties filled in for the queries that I have. So as you saw with all of these, they are looking for the type of writing that one of my posts is. So if I haven't filled in that property, that's a problem because it's not going to show up where I want it. So I have a range of queries like this across my space where it helps me say, hey, you forgot to do this, fill it in, and then you know that the system's going to work. And I put all of these queries onto a page called the processing page, and I can just systematically go through, make sure all of my properties are up to date so that all of my queries are fed properly. So in this case, all I would need to do is filter my writings for where the type of writing, that property, is empty. But as soon as I fill that in, it will update. And then when I open my dashboard sections now, the posts are where they're supposed to be. So I find that very helpful. 
I have forgotten to pin that query, which I don't want to do. And I have another query for things I've published. And what I do here is I actually go on status. So where status includes done. And I'll pin that as well. Okay, so I've added some content so you can see the kind of basic setup of everything. But I want to dive into things and edit things a little bit more. So the, the views that I've saved are really helping the type of writing that I do. So, for example, with personal stuff, I have used the new group by function to group by the status. So when I do that, you can see that I have finished pieces. So this one was finished because 2024 ended and things that are still in progress. I would like them to be in a different order. So I will go to the descending grouping. This means I get to see what I'm currently thinking about at a glance. And I like to read through my kind of completed reflections as well. I'll do a similar thing for my uh, published writing. Now in doing so, I realized that I need only for this query to filter out what I've already published because I've got that published query as well. So now I want to refine this query a bit more. So I'm looking not only for the type of writing, but also the status. And I will accept any status that does not include done. And the way that I sort this in my personal space is by the date that they were created. But obviously I've just created all of these today. So the timing doesn't quite work. And again, I have a range of statuses, um, even for stuff I'm still like working on or stuff that I haven't dismissed. So I'll group by status here as well. This other section is actually really useful in this case because it's kind of like an inbuilt maintenance query. So I can say what's going on here. I'm pretty sure I just haven't finished that draft so I could put that in progress. And this is super helpful because even right now, I can see that if I just sat down and finished some drafts, I could have two posts that I published soon which could be really cool so that's kind of my public writing stuff and then for think pieces i don't do anything they're just there for me to pick up if i would like my maintenance query is fine now for this published one i have just added the published on property to the view and i can see that for things that have been published if I don't have that filled in then I need to because I really like to open random days in the past and if you use a day property obviously all the day references are collected in the central calendar so if I add these properties I get to see what I was writing and publishing about at that certain time and that's really fun to look back on so I like to do that and all of that is achievable just by adding a date property and I find this to be enough of a visual reminder that there's actively something missing from these four posts and if I add the date it's in my calendar. Now I also added a query related to my kind of public writing so I'll duplicate this one to get started. This is about the things that are blocked or being blocked by. So I have what I call a roadblock query and here what I'm doing is I'm going to add a filter where blocking is not empty. So if I say that this post is blocking my post about unlearning note-taking beliefs, which is probably true actually, and then go back to that roadblock query, that item has shown up because it matches the filter. The blocking property is not empty because it's blocking something. So if I want to publish something, I have to make sure that this roadblock is clear. The inverse of this is for things that are blocked by something else. And this time I'm looking for things where blocked by is not empty. So now that other post is showing because it is blocked by research as a life practice. I will pin these to my dashboard again. And now when I click on my writing object type, I have all of these queries that help me dive into the specific writing that either I want to review I want to think about or that I want to continue writing. The final thing that I'll do is go to my dashboard and click on this settings icon so I can rearrange the sections. So for me it makes sense that published is at the end, same for maintenance query, 
and waiting and roadblock need to be up there because they're part of my publishing pipeline. And now it's the views that I want in the order that I want and it allows me just to get where I want to go more efficiently and without being distracted because I have lots of ideas all of the time and I don't want to get distracted with something as I go. So this is my writing dashboard in capacities. I hope this gave you some inspiration and I will always encourage people to write their thoughts down, whether you want to publish them or keep them private, but do some writing, pull some thoughts together. It's really cool and it's lovely to see how your thinking progresses. And if you want to do it in capacities, I hope this gave you some ideas.